Islam, 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 Moorish America. Want to rise first and give all praises to the great God Allah and honors to his holy prophet, honors to our holy prophet, Noble Drew Ali, El Haj Sharif Abdu Ali, that is. We give honors to our Moorish kin once again here, there, and everywhere, and therefore, honors to all of you who are continuously honoring yourselves by being yourselves. We give honors to our Grand National Seal. We give honors to our Grand National Emblem. We give honors to our National Flag, Divine Constitution, and Bylaws. And honors to all of you who are a living manifestation and personification of everything that our Holy Prophet brought to make us a nation. Before we come forth, Moorish Kim, we want to come forth and open up. And we will do this you know, from now on so that our Moorish kin can get a grand draw. We will open up with our ancient committee and adept Moorish American prayer. Ya Allah, Amnu Heru Makuneteru. Ya Allah, Abhet Heru. Ya Allah, Ma'at Heru. Ya Allah, Hotel Peru. Ya Allah, Heru. Ya Allah, Ma'at Herakud. Ya Allah, Wajet Dejud. Ya Allah, Pert Im Sutek, Pert Im Heru. Ya Allah, Bamadu, El Hajjit Sheps is Ray Abtu Ali. Aliyah, 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 and that is the same Moorish kin and transliteration. Who allowed the Father of the Universe? O Allah, the Father of love, O Allah, the Spirit of truth, O Allah, the Spirit of peace, O Allah, the Spirit of freedom, O Allah, the Spirit of justice, O Allah, are you are my protector, O Allah, are you are my guide, O Allah, are you are my salvation by night and by day, O Allah, through your holy prophet, O Allah, Drew Ali. Amen. Holy Issa, Holy Issa, Holy Issa. Islam, Islam, Islam. Ankwa Jetsaneb Shimotepu. To all of my Moorish kin out there, here, there, and everywhere. I'm Swift Angel number four. And um, I come forth before you with another grand measure family. And this time we are going to up the ante. And this is the way that we actually will begin to demonstrate from here on out. So, in times past, we would just get up here and address, you know, certain individuals, you know, in their approach. But now, we're going to go to a whole nother measure with this demonstration. And we're going to address the works. Since we have so many people out here who like to be authors, you know, we're going to put their work on display. And we're going to show you what, you know, people have been doing to fleece the masses, so to speak. And as I pull this work up with this particular one here, you know, no one is exempt, you know, because we out here. If you have spoken negatively against Prophet Noble Drew Ali, if you have spoken negative against uh, the Moorish American government or the Moorish American community in general, then just lay wait, you know, because... It's a new era in time now. And this will be the first one that begin to feel this scimitar of justice. You know, and this particular one claims to be of the comedian uh, ideology, so to speak. You know, and so we're going to show you some things because we know that the laws of Ma'at have, you know, uh, we'll say a, a foundation as to dealing with love. 
You know, the laws of Ma'at are based upon harm and truth, balance, right, order, and justice. And we refer to, you know, Mother Ma'at in the Moorish Holy Quran as the mother of virtues. You see? And from this a special measure, uh, if you can see it from that aspect, you're really dealing with the higher self. The mother of virtues is called the higher self, but the great God also is called the higher self, the husbandman, the one who casts seeds within the soil of the soul, so to speak, that one may unfold. So this is special drawing. What we are going to be doing is uh, putting these works up before the light. Those who have attacked the Moorish American, those who have uh, attacked, you know, Prophet Noble Drew Ali, that day is now over with. So more is this going to be a grand draw it, you know, share this video, you know, because now it's time for the people to really be educated because they think it's a game. And if you have spoken against the government, the prophet, no Badru Ali, all I can say is the scimitar and justice is on the manifest. So let us go into what we're actually dealing with right here. This is the work that we have before us to be examined. We want to put it up before the light. You see, and this particular one claims to be a master etymologist. So we finna check this etymology, so to speak, right? We want to see if it's love in the works that this particular one is put out here claiming to be one who is of the ancient science of Kemet. Now this is not the particular document that I'm concerned with right now. But as you can see, this one is trying to prove the origins of the word Africa. You see? And notice the word play being demonstrated here. A full raw. You know, and we want to see, you know, where we can find this particular word a full raw. Uh, where this particular brother came up with this demonstration. You see, it sounds good, but we must come into a clear conception of what truth is and what truth and falsehood and strangely mix is. Everything that look like gold ain't gold, Morris Ken. You see? And I hope they see this brother and they let him know what the demonstration is. You see? So here he says a fool means flesh, house, and the flesh of rock, so forth, right? You know? And then in the Twi or the Akan language, which he claims to be of, you know, the Akan, and I guess he did his ancestry test. You know, uh, he has words that he are trying to he is trying to uh, compare basically here, <clears throat> par himself. And he went on and on because this is what I'm seeing in his work. You know, he's basically reaching in a lot of this stuff here from what we can see. But this is not what I'm concerned with right now. We'll get into this particular demonstration later. You know, but he does say that, you know, Africa and the root origin of the word means smoke. And he pulled this from a particular dictionary, a European dictionary. Now, this is what I say about these different works, such as E. Wallace Budge. If you're going to read the works of E. Wallace Budge, at least give a comedic definition to the word and not try to interpret the works according to this measure. And then be claiming that you're demonstrating Afrocentricity, you know, something that really don't exist, you know, or this so-called chemotology that y'all be coming up with, you know. So he going crazy with Afu Ra, Afu Ra, you know, where did he get this concept from, Afu Ra? And I know as many of those of you who probably thought that this was act accurate right when you see this awful raw but we're going to expose these ones 
as moles with dirt on their head. And the only reason we going in from this special aspect is because you disrespected the prophet. And I wasn't even looking for this document. I was doing some more research and I came across it. So it was meant for me to see it. So it was meant for me to unsheath the scimitar of consciousness and cut through this demonstration. You know, because those who are able to be deceived will be deceived. But you can't deceive me because I've been studying these works for a long time. And this is really copy and paste at its best anyway. You know, the same thing. He's kind of redundant in here with recopying certain things to make the document seem extensive. But really, he's just regurgitating the same thing over and over and over again. You know, as he did even in his breakdown. I started to go with the audio, but I didn't want to waste time going with the audio because it would cut in my time, you know, to try to address this special measure. So what I'm going to do, I just pull the document up and I hope somebody go get it and he come up in trying to defend this. This is what caused me to put my eye on this special one. He said more means dead. Now, I guess his name is Adwe Rafo Quasi Rod Nahim Ta Akan, the author of this special mention. He has a page on Facebook, you know, but we are not concerned with that right now. We're going to point him out after this. But this particular one said more means dead. Now, I'm going to show you the, the witchery and the magician-like behavior that this one has tried to demonstrate. And I might pull some of the audio up later just to deal with specific parts of it, you know, after I get done so you can hear this foolery. You know, he made it look real good. He put it together. He organized it well, didn't he? <laughs> And we ain't got to go through everything because, again, like I told you, he's going to be very redundant when it comes to this demonstration. He brought the wrath of this scimitar of consciousness down on him when he spoke against Prophet Noble Drew Ali. So maybe it was the prophet who allowed me to come across this particular document that I wasn't looking for. I don't know. But if Africa means smoke, then I want all the smoke. Yes, sir. We ready. So, let's just cover a few measures here. Now, pay close attention to this family. Let me check my um, box before I go any further so I can pay homage to any of those who may be present. Islam. Islam, family. Islamism. Gratitude, brother... Uh, Andrew Rashad Richel and Sister Alexis Mary, Islam. Oh, yeah, so we're going to set the record straight, Moorish Ken. <clears throat> and pay close attention to these ones because they like to try to get out here with a, a forked tongue, so to speak. You know, and the word Akhani and Kemet in the language of Kemet actually means a fiend, a serpent. So, this is the information of the serpent. It sounds like that which is in the semblance of the truth until you run across a real committee in that depth. You see? So he said the term in ancient Kemet written MR in the Metutu, the hieroglyphs, he say has been identified as a cognate for the term more. Found in English as a noun and a verb. The term in Kemet is typically pronounced in the Coptic dialect, late Kemet dialect, which came into use 2,000 years ago as mir, a mar, a bar. Note in the language of Kemet, the M and B sounds and can interchange. This interchange also exists in the Akan language of Ghana, an Ivory Coast in West Africa. You know, this Africa. 
<laughs> you know, this is a word he created, and we'll get into that in a minute. For example, the word of blood, morgia, is also written and pronounced borgia in a con. The term M and R in Kamet. So what this brother did to get straight to it, <clears throat> he went through the dictionary of E. Wallace Budge, a European who went into Kemet and basically stole, you know, papery, you know, and then, now this is a European don't know nothing about Egyptology, none of them Europeans, Champollion, uh, you know, None of them that claim to have some knowledge, you know, about the hieroglyphics had no idea as to what they were talking about. See, what you got to realize is that when you're dealing with the hieroglyphics, if you want to make hieroglyphics a language, you got over thousands of glyphs. So it ain't but a few alphabets that they chose to put beside the actual alphabetical uh, structure of what they call heretic. So they took some signs and put it next to the heretic and then said, well, this is the language of the ancient Egyptians. But the problem with that is if you got some 20,000 or 10,000 other signs and symbols, then where would those signs and symbols fit in regards to dealing with the ancient Egyptian language? you would be at a loss. So then you go to trying to put things together and the information becomes a hodgepodge, so to speak. So what they did, they later used the heretic and then they used the Coptic language, you know, that they tried to use to assist them. And it was easy to use it because they had started calling Coptic Greek by that time. So they used that to pretty much get over the bridge and try to have so-called understanding. So what they call Greek is really Coptic and Demotic. You know, all you got to do is look it up. And I can go and show you that. You know, matter of fact, since I'm here, I'm, I will show you that. I want to show it to you. I don't want to go too far off, but I'm going to show you this here so you would know this from now on. That's the erratic. <clears throat> so when they came up with these demonstrations right here that they call demotic, right? And demotic, you know, is pretty much, you know, if you look at it, especially here, you can see where Arabic and all that right there derived from. You see how that demotic look? It looked just like Arabic, don't it? Without vowels. You see, this is demotic. So... <clears throat> When you go into the key to uh, understanding these special measures, family, and I ain't trying to get into teaching the alphabet or nothing like that right now. But let's just say after they came from Demotic and they came into what they call Coptic, you know, because that's where they got it from. Look at these symbols. This is the Coptic language, right? You see the alphabets? Alpha, Vita, Gamma, Delta. You see this right here, right? And that's the key about these first alphabets here. See, this is the DNA that show you where the languages have been changed. Every original language that come from our ancestors have the A, B, G, and the D in the dialect. You see? So now, this is what a European came up with, the A, B, C, D, because the C is interchangeable with the G, right? So, pay attention. This is Coptic here. Now, what I'm going to do, now that you see this here, we're going to pull up what they call Greek.
we're going to pull up what they call Greek, right? Yeah, I guess I pulled this one up. Better yet. Yeah, we'll keep that one there. So pay attention. This is Coptic. Look at the letters and the symbols here. This is Greek. See the E? You see the E? You see the uh the Z? Zeta? You see Zeta. You see? And we can go all the way down, but do that on your own time. What they call Greek is really Coptic. You see? So any work that's so-called Greek, this should correct you. Let's, let's make this correction now in your mind. No longer refer to the language they call Greek as Greek language. Refer to it as Coptic. The book of Enoch that was found uh, in uh, Ethiopia, it was translated in Coptic. You see? Now, what's even more interesting, you know, this is where you get your alpha, your beta, you know, your gamma, your delta, you know, all these different so-called Greek, you know, fraternities and sororities and so forth and so on. You know, it's really from the Coptic. You know, and Coptic is supposed to be one of the most, you know, latest forms, so to speak, or the closest forms that they like to say to, you know, um, basically related to the Comedian language. And see here, they actually call this the Sahidic. Well, they didn't. Yeah, they did. They, they, yes, they did. Okay. So they actually call this the Sahidic Coptic alphabet, if you can see it right now. See, you have Boharic and Sahidic, but I ain't going to get into that right now. I'm pointing things out because I want to make it plain before I even go into this special drawing. Now, let me show you some mails. The Phoenician alphabet. Look at the Phoenician alphabet. We can go into any one of them actually, but I want to go into the one that has a transliteration in it. They actually put it in different order here. But you see the A, B, G, and the D? You see that's three different languages. Phoenician, Demotic, and that is the Coptic. All of them begin with A, B, G, and D. So that lets you know that those languages are related to each other in some type of way. You see? Only difference is the pronunciation and so forth and so on. And the way that they arrange them. So when you look at the inscriptions of the Phoenician uh, writing. And you look at, you know, the Coptic and so forth and so on you will notice they are the same. So this is a key to you being able to understand when it comes to the language. But we'll get into that on another measure because we ain't here to teach the language right now. I'm just trying to show you some corrections that need to be made that one need to pay attention to. So let me get back at it because we at this one's head right here and we don't want to take too long. So he came here and he was dealing with the root M and R in Kemet. And he went into this particular dictionary here, the dictionary of E. Wallace Budge. Let me make it plain to you. We're going to go over here real quick. Okay. He went into this dictionary. Now, my problem is not so much that he went into the dictionary, but the problem is, is the way he tried to use this dictionary, this European that stole this papery. I'm talking about put it in a newspaper, you know, up under his coat and smuggled it out. If he would have got caught, he would have lost his hands. <laughs> you see? So, nevertheless, 
It's a very vast piece of work here. And he actually have a lot of the different languages here. You know, and um, this is actually where he got the name. That terminology that he was referring to, the definitions for the words. He came to E. Wallace Budge Works. Now, in his language, you will hear him condemning, you know, uh, Moors who he say used the European demonstration. Right? But yet, the same thing he condemned the Moors for, he demonstrated. Now, we're going to show you the words, well, the words in this dictionary, the only words that actually begin with A and F. Okay, so you we're going to start from here and go up to where he pulled his little words from. And I'm going to get back to the M and R in a minute. This is what he say he derived Africa from. So A and F, it means offerings of the birds and fish. A F T. A F, right? The hymn, strength and might, Afa, gluttony, greedy, man, right? Afat, greed, gluttony, afau, a kind balsam or medicine. Afa oh, right? To trouble, to be troubled. Those who are troubled are those who give trouble. <laughs> that sounds about like what's going on right there. But um, let me come over here. Then he had afaf, to praise, rejoice, to exalt, afit, flame, fire, afu, to injure, to inflict an injury, an afu right here, tuat, or the talk. The uh, worm, keti. So these are the only two words that deal with afu. So either you're dealing with to injure, to inflict an injury, or you're dealing with afu, the talk, the worm, you know, snake basically. You know, so this is the afu, what he used to act. And you see the serpent right there. You know, he used this as special measure basically to construct the word Afu Ra. This word right here, this is what I'm referring to in this document. And so basically, he's trying to construct his own narrative, so to speak, in regards to dealing with this drawing. And you see it right there Afu Ra. But you see that this word Afu has nothing to do with. You know, with what he is suggesting that it has something to do with. He said, Afu means air. Right? But when we come over here to this dictionary upon investigation, we don't see that over here. You see? And then he also used this word, because this is the word that they universally try to trace the word Africa back to. This word and this word. And these are actually only two words in here that have the letter R behind the F. And you see it means to be or uh, to burn or to be hot. Afri. And this is why I said, he said means smoke. So I want all the smoke. So he's saying this is where the word Africa come from. So this is just assumption. You know, but in this whole dictionary, you'll never find a word holistically spelled together as Africa. This is the only thing he had to go on. These two words and this word here that he concocted into his own demonstration. But yet he had the audacity to not only try to attack the Moors, attack the prophet, but you're going to see that the Moorish demonstration is all over this Comedian language by the time I get done. Oh, he ain't the only one that's going to get this work. You know, so let every one of them know that it spoke out. If you got some written works out there, we coming for you. And we're going to put it out there before the world to see. Because I read a lot of the works of these people who've been perpetrating and fraud out here trying to make money off the misery of our people. 
And now I'm finna expose all of you. So let me come back over here again to this particular word. He said more means dead and he used the root M and R. Let me show you how he tried to manipulate our family, Moors. He started with this particular definition. Mirror. Where it means collection, water, lake, pool, cistern, uh, reservoir, basin, canal, in, uh, inundation, inundation, pardon self, <clears throat> flood, stream. You know, uh, then he went here, mirror. It means swampy land. Meru. Plain, mountain. Meret, desert, land, wasteland. You see, now he went into all of this right here. Now I'm going to tell you something about this particular word. He just took a whole bunch of words with M-E-R and tried to bunch them together. But he's going to get it real off the chain in a minute. But I'm going to show you how selective this brother was in seeking out information out of this particular dictionary. A European work now. I ain't got no problem with him digging through the work. My problem is, if you're going to go into the work, then the prophet say, when you get the pen in your hand, then you write the damage. So you should be going in here to critique the work of this European, not use the European work to slander our people. Because when I go in here, I'm going in here and I'm going to correct some measures. So right here, Mir and Meru, really, Mir and Meru actually refer to this plain and this mountain. This is actually referring to Nubia. And I spoke on this in a previous class. Matter of fact, last, you know, the night before last, or last night, the Meroi. And Meru is a universal name. When they talk about the mountain, Meru, a Mount Meru, you know, this is actually referring to this particular place. I'm going to do it like this here because I don't want to just talk about it. And not show it to you. Because if I just demonstrate. Then you're going to think I'm just talking. I'll give it to you like this right here. This is Mount Meru. Africa. In Tanzania. Now. He. Is out here claiming. That he's African. But he's trying to. Uh, slander. The name. Meru. Because he hates the Moors this much. But yet he's claiming he's demonstrating from a comedian perspective. You see, this is Mount Meru. There, there's also a teaching in regards to dealing with Mount Meru. According to the, uh, the Hindus. You know, Meru is... Uh, here you go. Here's one dealing with Buddhism. See, they say Sumeru, Mount Meru. You see... The name of the central world mountain in Buddhist cosmology, etymologically, the proper name of the mountain Meru is Pali Meru, which is added. You see, it said the appro, appro, better, well, pro, the approbatory, pardon, self prefix, su, resulting in uh, the meaning excellent, Meru, wonderful Meru, right? So there's a Mount Meru mentioned here. Also, Moorish Ken. When you go, man, you can go. It's a Mount Meru pretty much all over the place. They're everywhere. But uh, Meru also have to do again with the people of the Meru Kushite dynasty, so to speak. And we went over this last night. All my measures pretty much will link up with other measures. You see, Mero is a name of Kush. You know, so when you go into understanding that, and the Kushites are in Kemet. That's where the term Meroitic come from, the Meroitic language. And we showed that the vowels for the language come from the Meroitic language. So, Going back, family, this is uh, one of the things that 
he didn't emphasize too much on. But he tried to tie this to the word merit just because they was beside each other. And this is the desert land. This is the wasteland, the wilderness. You see, so he took this word and basically tried to say, well, this mirror means swampy land. You know, and then he went all the way down here. We ain't going to read all the foolishery that he got going on. We just going to show you what he did. Then he took this word, mert, funerary chest, a coffer. Because he want to signify that this means death. That's what he's saying up here. This is dead land or swampy land. This is damn land. You see, mirror. Now, he didn't go into the emphasis on mirror meaning amen. See, he didn't emphasize that. Mirror, he say, means to be sick, pain, greed, meru, sick man, mirari. A sick man, mert, everything that was negative with a root of M-R, M-E-R, to die, death, damn. He pulled these special definitions up, right? He even took the term which pyramid derived from, mirror. You see, and then he tried to say, well, the pyramid, you know, this has to do with the dead land as well, you know. He mentioned that, as a matter of fact, right here, when he was speaking of Mera, in the ancient name of Egypt, Patamera, a Patamera. You know, a Tem uh, Temere, a lot of people like to say. But he said this reference to the dead land, death, flood, swamp. And then what he did is went to the term more. Now, in the dictionary, this term more here has nothing to do with a person. It has to do with the ground. So he took this word that deals with the ground. And there's another word that actually deals with the word more, which actually deals with a ship. You know, and he tied all of this information up right here to say more means dead. Now, this is not a person. This is dealing with land. This is not the more as in a Moorish person. But see, this is how crafty one is. They come and they try to tie, hold, tie things in with a European definition, basically using all European definition to attack the one free national names of the Moorish Americans, while at the same try, time trying to uh, create his own definition for the word Africa. You see this? <laughs> you ain't seen nothing yet. Watch this. So he, again, he's just regurgitating right here. So he's putting all the same thing in here that he's already said. Oh, it means the damn name of set. Mirror, Mera. Then he went back and took it back to Patamira. You see, uh, Mera, you know, Tamare, which is actually the ancient name for the land of Egypt. Mera. And the reason why he had to attack that as being dead land, because he know that this word here, being linked, if you take the vowels out, the A and the E, then you have the M and R, which actually is the same root of the word more. You see? So how are you going to attack Kemet and claim that you are a con, an African, and one who descend through Kemet? The Akan come through the lineage of the ancient Canaanites. And ancient Canaanites come through the lineage of Ham, Akam. Goodness gracious. How can you be so ignorant? You see, let me show you something, right? Now, somebody that sleep, he gonna mislead a lot of people that sleep. So then he came over here. And he was saying that the Akon have a proverbial saying, meaning love is death. So he tried to tie now this totally different word, mir, which means to love, desire, to wish for, to crave, for, to will, to love, desire. You know, he tried to tie this particular word back to the other word because they spelled the same. But if you look at the so-called glyphs here that they have as a language, 
they're definitely different from the glyphs that are up here in this particular word. Totally different. You see what I'm saying? So only one who is ignorant will fall for this foolery and this truth and falsehood are strangely mixed. You know, so you're saying that mirror means love, but then you're saying mirror means death. What it is, you don't know how to differentiate words. You're trying to read, you know, a foreign language in the way that you read in the European way. In other words, just like we would read in a dictionary and relate particular words to other words. He's trying to do that with the Comedian language. And this is the European expression. Do you know that you have to go in here and dissect these words, word by word, and really come up with the true definition from a Comedian perspective? You have a Eurocentric thought pattern, and you're trying to convince the people are ignorant people, people don't know no better, and they'll actually believe this if they don't know, but I know better, so you can't fool me. Now watch this. So he kept going on. He regurgitating the same thing here. I'm going to show you the sinister aspect behind it, Moore's kid. So he went here then and said, okay, well, then the word more was corrupted, where well, the word MR was corrupted to more. You see, meaning swampland, water, marshland. Do you know that there's a portion where the European gave their definition of, again, three particular persons, places, or things they referred to with this M-O-O-R. One was the Moors as a people. The next was more in regards to dealing with the land. This is in the European dictionary now. This is the definition that he's trying to tie back to the people. And then more as in where you take a, a cord and you moor a ship to a dock, so to speak, so that the ship won't flow out, you know, and uh, basically you, you lose your, your ship. So you anchor it down, you moor it, you know. So on a higher level, we moors know that has to do with mooring yourself with the golden cord of love, you know. Basically, more in your heart from uh, from your heart to your brother's heart. You know, you take that golden cord of love. You know, this is the demonstration as we demonstrate the science. You know, so he has corrupted that particular insight here. So nevertheless, he went into saying that this word Amir means to love and, you know, which is what they placed here. And then he came up with a more. So he compared this with the Spanish word, a more, right? Love. <clears throat> so you come here, then he tried to use the term what I was telling you about earlier. Merit, a meru, boats, shipping in a port. You know, this is where you deal with tying that particular ship, so to speak. You know, or the mooring process, you know. So he went into all these different measures here, trying to make comparisons. But notice, there it go right there, Minot, that's the Morden Post. But he tried to go through all these particular measures, Morris Ken. I don't know if a more made him mad or they upset at him, but he went out of his way. And I'm finna show it to you in a minute. He went out of his way to find every negative connotation with the root M and R to try to discredit the Moors. But I'm going to show you what he didn't show you, though. I'm going to show you what he hid behind his back. And these words right here, a lot of them that he uh, copied and pasted, these same words were actually, some of them was a part of the same definition. So it means he read over these definitions you know, just to get to anything negative that he could find to make the name more sound negative. But I'm going to show you something that goes far more extensive than what he done put out here. And he didn't go into no aspects of explaining. You see again, mirror, 
Mut Amen. So Amen was referred to as Mir as well. See, he don't want to get into no explanations on why Amen means Mir. See, Amen or Amen Ra, you know, is where the term Amen come from. But Amen was very revered in ancient Kemet. Anybody, if you know about Kemet, that's one of the first names you come into contact with, Amen Ra. You see, so why was Amen Ra known as Mir? See, he didn't talk about that. And there's a reason. No, he want to go into the demonstration and say the MRW, this means servants, underlings, partisans, supporters, bondmen. You know, anything negative that he can find now. This is what he did. I'm going to show you what he read around to get to this, though. Everything that had M-E-R in it, he tried to use it, you know, to benefit him. Everything negative, I would say. You know, so he went through all of this special drawing. And so he was going pretty much back and forth and over and over with the same thing here. You see him saying the same thing here. He's redundant. Like I said before, he basically did that, you know, to make the document more extensive. This is the same thing he said in the beginning, mirror. Here you see the definition mirror with I'm in there again, which confirmed what I said. That's the second definition. But see, his emphasis is this sick man demonstration. Mirari, Mirua, Mira, Mera, female slave, peasant dependent. He trying to use everything that he can to place a negative connotation on the word more. And therefore, by the time he come up, then he drew this conclusion. Hold up, let me see. I want to blow it up so you can really see it. He came to this conclusion. More means dead, the dead damn. Now, this is his definition. This is his word, Africani, that he created, you know, by piecemealing different words and chopping and screwing the demonstration. <clears throat> so, basically, and then now, you know, he want to trace this back to the Eurasian language of black and so forth and black and all of that. I guess he's not accepting that word because he accept this word. Remember, I showed you that he had got this definition from where I pointed it out to you at. Let us go back. Remember? See? At fear. To burn. To be hot. Afri. Smoke. Hot vapor. It's the same definition that he used. So this is the same dictionary that he used. It's the most extensive. That's why he tried to use it. But he ain't said nothing. All this loud talking right here and he ain't said nothing. You see? But you want to condemn the Moors because you say the Moors demonstrate Eurocentric ideas. But you demonstrate from a Eurocentric perspective. You don't even have the insight to go into and give your own exegesis. You just copied and pasted and then tried to put words together that look similar and say this is what it means. But you would never find this word as a whole, as we just showed you. You know, there is no word Afra up there. There is no word, you know, <laughs> the way he put it up there talking about Afra Ka. You know, Afriatakat. There is none of that in the ancient comedian teaching. This is something he came up with. And if he's saying this word came from the Akan, the Akan came way after the ancient Kemites did. The people of Ghana. You see? So then he even talked about what he called the black Berbers. That's another misguided terminology that he used. A Berber... The name Berber was given to the Moors by the Arabs. And the Arabs gave them that name. It actually means barbarians. Our people never referred to themselves as barbarians. And the reason why they gave them that name because they didn't want to honor the name that they were known by. The name Mari. 
because Mari actually meant Moorish gods. You see? And we put this out there as well for our family to see. So if Mari meant Moorish gods, and you can go look at my last video I did, and you'll get all that breakdown. You know, this is why the Arabs, being that they was demonstrating the monotheistic approach, you know, they felt some type of way coming into contact with the Moors calling themselves gods. So the key in regards to dealing with this is special name, Mari, that we're talking about, and we actually demonstrated this uh, the other day, as a matter of fact. We're going to go right here. I'm going to show it to you again. You see this right here? The conquest of the natives. And I spoke of this right here before. See this word right here? Moorish gods. The Demari or the Morishi. You see? They was called protecting God, saving God. And this word Mari, even in other languages, mean spirit of God, the spirit. So even if you change different languages, it's either relating to God, spirit, or it's relating to a man, or it's relating to the land. That's something that he didn't want to tell you. Well, we seen him try to hide it when he spoke on Tamaray or Tamari. You see, Patamari. When he spoke on that, he was trying to cover that up and say it means dead land. But that's not what the definition states. The definition just states simply, it's the name, an uh, ancient name for Egypt. You see? And this is all because of hatred. Now, hatred made people demonstrate like this. A more made him mad, or he hate the Moorish demonstration, or he was sent as an agent to cause confusion. But like I said, he ain't the only one that gets it. We got a couple of more of them on the radar. And we're going to get at them too. He just the first to get it. So congratulations to you, brother. You know, you just got a chance to have, you know, a real adept pick your measure apart before the masses. Since you want to come in here and say the Moors ain't never been scrutinized, you thought you was going to get by with this? You can't sell this to the masses no more. You won't be after I get done with you because we're going to put you out there. I'm going to teach you all about playing with Noble Drew Ali in this Moorish movement thinking that, you know, we weak when it comes to scholarship. All those who came before us, you know, a lot of them, some of them were weak in their approach. Abba Lord, I got some bones to pick with him too as well. I'm going to pick some of his works together. I mean, apart a together with these particular ones here, yeah. you know, so when I get done with you, you know, and put you on display, you know, it's going to be on to the next one. And this is all to wake the people up. It ain't got nothing to do with hatred. It's simply exposing your pseudo scholarship, as you like to refer to it as, you know, now somebody that don't know no better, you can get this by and get off. And you can sell it to people, make a lot of money because it sounds good because you mastered your own linguistics, so to speak. But when you know better, you do better. You see? And I'm finna teach my people that don't know better how to know better. And they will do better by the time I get done with this measure. So let me go back over here. So here he is talking about the Fulani, you know, and everybody else. And I guess the brother took his ancestry test. You know, and so he's feeling full of pride right now. But I want you to know that calling yourself an African or an Africani, because he got different name, it keep changing. You know, he see there you go, he took different words. We see we didn't see our food meaning flesh in that dictionary up there. You know, so where did he get that from? And then he got raw. We know raw means spirit, car dealing with it. We already know that. So he tried to take those three elements and superimpose, you know, his particular interpretation of it. And then this is Africa. You know, now, if that's how you want to demonstrate all is well, but don't lie 
and say that this word Africa is in the Comedian language because we just exposed that that name Africa is not in the Comedian language. Only thing you see there is the Afri. You know, and uh, yeah. You know, smoke, to be hot, vapor. Ain't got nothing to do with that right there, what you talking about. So he then came here talking about the mar and the bar. You know, he went through a great lift now to really try to disrespect the Moors. You know, overseer, director, superintendent. You know, oh, he went all in with this. Now, it's a whole document where he kind of just was like a broken record pretty much regurgitating the same thing over and over again until the end really having no substance in it. You know, just to make it look good. He put pictures up there, you know, to get the people, captivate the people, so to speak. You know, he came down here and tried to demonstrate who the Mari was in the Martu. You know, he was trying to twist the definition here as well. Then he went down here and tried to justify why the word Mari you see, geographically to the extreme uh, west of Kemet, why it bears the title that it bears. And he's claiming that it was the Greeks and the Romans who began to use the term Mari to refer not only to the people of the Numidian kingdom of that time, Mauritania, but to black people in general. And we already exposed this, you know, in regards to dealing with it, but we're going to go back there again since it's relevant right now. Let me show you something. He said Amari He said that the Mari got their name from the Greeks. But we already exposed it here. <clears throat> that when you go into this history, Moors family, you know, they say Mari by Strabo, who wrote in the early first century as the native name, which was also adopted in the Latin, while he cites the Greek name for the same people as Morushi. The name Mari is a tribal confederation of generic ethnic designator thus seems to roughly correspond to the people known as the Numidians, right? In earlier ethnography, right? Both terms presumably uh, a group early Berber-speaking population earliest, you know, of the, they call it the Tifnot, you know, and the epigraph dates to about the 3rd century B uh, BC. <clears throat> this is what he's saying, right? He giving you this small, this, this, this definition right here. This is where he got his information from. But when you go into the essence of it, and you go to the word Mauritania, then you see right here, Mauri means Moorish kingdom. Mauritania exists as a tribal kingdom of Berber, right? They use the term Berber. That's the Arab terminology. Mauri people. Then it says the Phoenicians who explored North Africa, you say the coast for about, from about 900 BC called the country <clears throat> at the extreme western edge of uh, their known world, Maharim, meaning western land. You see that there? Even though it changed, you see the word Mar there, right? So this western land dealing with the Mari out of Moorish kingdom right here, right? This is something that was left out of the other definition when Strobo spoke. This is why you have to be careful with Wikipedia. In the early first century, Strobo recorded Maori as the native name of the people. The native name of the people. That means they was using it. Opposite the Iberian Peninsula. This affiliation was adopted into Latin. Where's the Greek name? And we know it ain't no Greek. We just pointed that out. You're really talking about uh, the Phoenician, you're really talking about Coptic. You see, same thing. The name for the tribe is Marossi. Mori would later bequeath their name to the Moors 
on the Mediterranean coast of North Africa. You see, from at least the third century BC. So the Mari is who the Moors adopted their name from, right? This was the native name of the people. The Greeks who began to take this up used it because they heard the people using it, so-called Greek people. You see, the Romans began to do this because they heard them using it. Let's straighten that out. So, now let us go back to this document. You know, so when you see what he's talking about here, then that means nothing. You know, so this is truth and falsehood strangely mixed. And it'll mislead you. Now, he's criticizing everything the Moors demonstrate as Eurocentric philosophy, but all of his education here is coming from the European. Now, we know we all speak the English language over here. We all trying to learn about what it is that belonged to our ancestors and what our ancestors studied, what they taught, and everything. But Africa is not a nationality. Africa we already know we can go into the Amelia's Africanist demonstration. There's so many theories as to the word Africa and where it could even say it come from effort. One of the uh, seeds of Abraham, grand seeds. You know, uh, they got so many different aspects of it. But the main measure is that Africa is a continent. It's not a nationality. So if you're saying you're African and it came down to you being indigenous to this land. There were no Africans into this land until they was brought here during the time of slavery. Are people calling themselves that, so to speak? Now, those referred to as Moors, so to speak, Moors had navigated over here and been in the West before slavery. Moors were the ones who navigated the ship in order to come over here and so forth and so on. You see, under duress and some of them not even knowing that they was leading, you know, to a place of doom or a situation of being oppressed or whatever the case may be. So nevertheless, you know, when you look at the books, the books going to tell you that an African, you know, is deemed a slave when he's born here. He can't claim that he is indigenous to this land. That's why the name Africa has no power. Moor is the only name that has that power for one to be indigenous to this land. That's the difference between the terminology. And any other terminology that you want to reach into the motherland and grab hold to, be it, you know, Nigerian, Congolese, uh, uh, you know, whatever you want to call it. Neither one of those titles from the motherland can help you when it comes to being indigenous to the land. Even if you did trace your ancestry and your ancestry showed you came from a particular people. Now, it might be beneficial if you were trying to be a citizen or get some type of citizenship in relation to those people over there by proving it through your ancestral bloodline. Because that's how Morocco would accept somebody if they can prove they got Moroccan blood. But we Moors don't demonstrate like that. We are the ancient Moabites. We founded the Moroccan Empire. When you speak, Prophet Noah Drew Ali taught about the capital empire and the dominion. You see, Egypt, the capital empire and dominion. You see, so this is dealing with the empire. Empires have kingdoms. Nations that are subject to it. Morocco today, for example, is a kingdom. It's not an empire. The ancient Moroccan empire was founded by the Moors. So any name, I don't care what it is, whatever your ancestry DNA test tell you, it tell you you a con. You can't use that name a con over here and be considered indigenous to this land. You can't use the name Yoruba over here and be indigenous to this land. You can't use African. You can't use black, Negro, color. None of that. You can't use Hebrew either. 
Because Hebrew is not a name of a people indigenous to this land. But we can go into numerous documents and see what a European spoke of the Moors being indigenous to this land. The only problem is, is that our people as a collectively are twisted up mentally in the head because they're trying to take a particular ideology dealing with, you know, uh, saying I belong to this tribe. Tribalism. Tribalism is causing us to suffer as a whole. Tribalism outside of one having a knowledge of an ancestry DNA test and so forth and so on. You can't use now one of these names. And that's not to disrespect your ancestry if that's what you found. Salute you. It's good that you know where you come from. But the name of those people who uh, are here in this land that are indigenous, the name that has power is Moorish. And the only reason when you say, well, why the Moors can't do this? Because idiotic people don't want to come together under one free national name. That's why. That's why the demonstration uh, is, is having conflict, so to speak. Because y'all want to be everything other than what you are. And you're listening to clowns like this talking about more means dead. Now let me show you what he didn't show you. So you don't think I'm just ranting up here. This is what he didn't show you. So he tried to cover up, and this was the end of his document. You know, the same thing. Peasant, more miserable. You know, he went and found every negative example that he could to make more mean dead. So what it was, that this is an attempt to attack and destroy, you know, the name more being accepted by our people. You know, and I guess he would consider himself a pan-Africanist. You see? So now let me put him out here and show you how dishonest he is. You went through there and you mean to tell me and find all these words and you pretty much just copied and paste and copy and paste the same thing. You spam this whole PDF with the same information over and over and over again to basically convince the people that the Moors are more means dead. You was upset by hearing the term black means dead, huh? Are you as upset with a more for telling you that, you know, Africa is a no place, huh? You see, you have, come on, man. <laughs> so let me go ahead and show you Morris Ken what he tried to hide from y'all. And y'all got to beware of these clowns, these cats out here playing with people. And by the way, too, before I go there, this word a fur, you know, as they derived, it says derived from the Punic or the Berber term, which we know it goes back to, uh, we've seen the Comedian root to this word here, a fur. But this was dealing with a term for the country in which the city of Carthage was located. Actually, you can see it on the map. You know, did you know that in, in certain aspects, though we use the term Africa for the collective of the map, which is really a Kubalon, you know, uh, it, Africa was one little spot at one time on the map. But that's a whole nother measure. I ain't got time to pull up no maps right now. Check that out on your own. But it said possibly derived from, you see, an ethnonym. It said a name of an indigenous tribe encountered by the Phoenician colonies. This is one people now. They said afar, it means dust here, right? Apar, dust. And they dealing with the etymological root. Then they took it to cave here with the Berber language, right? So you mean to tell me Africans really deal with cave people? A cave man? <laughs> man, that's why they say our people were savages. You know, they done gave us their history, basically. See, that's what happened when you deal with Roman history. And that's the effort that I referred to earlier, uh, Ephron. See, so everybody had their way with that particular terminology. And you've seen the evolution of it, you know, all the way up into Afro. <laughs> Look at this. So you come all the way here, and there he is, Africanus, Africa. So nevertheless, you still got this name from the Roman or the European. 
you've been exposed. Now let us get back to this dictionary and show the people what you tried to hide. See, this is what he tried. This is what he tried to hide, y'all. In order for him to come up with those definitions that he went and pulled up out of here, we're gonna start with the very first one dealing with MER. Okay. Here's one definition that means particle, prohibition, mirror. Totally different word than any of what he tried to post. Mirror. Here's another one, which means uh, it's merit. It means copy, likeness. Mirror. Here. This is a seagoing ship. He used this definition. So it shows you that he picked and chose. He left these up here, but he picked and chose that which was relevant to what he was trying to put out there negatively against the Moors. See, this is show you, it show you that his intent was dirty. His research basically exposed him. Mirror, this is another definition that he took. You see, dealing with the collection of water, lake, pool, cistern, reservoir. So he went on past this. Then he took this definition, swampy land, right? He didn't use this demonstration dealing with libation tank. There's another mirror. You see the difference in the, the glyphs here? And remember, these glyphs are really not the alphabet. This is the way the European put it together. I know better. Mirror. The basin or harbor. He used a similar definition. Mirror. Flood. Bodily excretion. You see? Merit. Well, what about the celestial heaven, the celestial lake, heaven and sky that relates to merit? You didn't get into it. You didn't talk about Mariotis, merit. This is the heavenly uh, celestial uh, waters mentioned in ancient Kemet in relation to dealing with the Nile. See, he didn't want to get in that because it was too close to what the word more meant. Remember, I just showed you that the word more meant God. To the Moors. So here it is here. Merit. He skipped over this. He seen that land and stage sea coast. It wasn't relevant to him. Merit. Lake Reservoir. Merit. Merut. You know. Boat. Ship. And port. He used that one. Merit. Crocodiles. Which bass on the river bank. He didn't go into that in Murti. He used this love songs. He got into the aspects of dealing with love. Right. And that, you know, the goddess of inundation, you know, Murti. You see, he didn't really go too much into those things there. <clears throat> Why he didn't go into this is special word, Me'aru. This word Me'aru is closer to the word more. And what it means again, a lake in Seket Aru. For those who are not familiar with Seket Aru, uh, Seket Aru is basically the Comedian paradise, so to speak. The Arabs call it Jannah. Seket Aru is basically paradise. So, why you didn't refer to that as special measure right there? Mer Aru. Right? That goes back to Mount Mero. It can be traced to that same root. A lot of these pretty much wasn't really relevant to him because they had other measures on the end. See, he was strictly dealing with the MER. So he kept researching and digging through this particular document, looking for something negative, anything negative that he could find. So in going through that, he went all the way over here and he started again right here. This is where he came up with the definition dealing with mirror, to love, to desire, to wish for, to crave for. To will. You see, and don't just think I'm just making this up. This is actually what he did. Look right here. Yeah, go right there. To love, to desire, to wish for, to crave for, to will. So he went and took definitions of his own liking to pretty much suit his interpretation, his pseudo interpretation of what was really going on. But look at what he had to skip over. Everything here pretty much dealing with love over here, right? Love, desire, wish something, love, long, wish for. Mertab, willingly, mer, 
wish for love, he used that definition. Can you imagine somebody just going through a document looking for something, you know, to try to bring about some hatred toward, you know, another people because he feel like, well, I can take this to an etymological root and this going to bring hatred toward the Moors. They ain't going to like the Moors after we get done with this. I'm going to let you hear him talk after we get done with this on this same document right here. Meruti, he took those definitions right there. Beloved woman, he used all of these here, merit, merit, desire, wish. He didn't use that loving mankind. So if all these words are more, then why couldn't more mean love? Why couldn't more mean a lover of mankind or humanity, so to speak? Why couldn't, you know, it deal with benevolence like that definition gave? So he used all that, and this is pretty much where he shut down at. Now, I'm going to show you uh, where he shut down at. And he skipped all over this now. Mir, it means beloved one, a title of seven gods, several gods. Now, remember, I told you the word Mari means the Moorish gods. So Mir, in connection with Mari, you can see this comedically referred to that. If you can say that the word that relates to land relates to the European definition of swamp land, then this word at its root will follow up in regards to dealing with the word Mari as it relates to Mari meaning God, which he didn't use these definitions. Why? Because they meant something good in regards to dealing with a relation to the Moors. So he picked and chose in hatred just to be able to slander the Moors. See, Mary, a title of several gods. Meriti. That is again, Mariotic form of Osiris. And we know who Osiris is. He used a Meriti, but he didn't accept the Meriti dealing with Osa. Meriti again, a god. No, what he did is he came over here and he tried to say, okay, it means dead, murty. You see, anything that he can find negative and basically spam the heck out of this paper with this hodgepodge and foolery. Anything that he can find negative. He didn't want to let you know that that word was actually linked to the word God. Now these are just words. You ain't seen nothing yet, family. These are words that he basically purposely went over. So you reading that, oh no, nah, that right there meant a title of Ra. We can't put that up there. It meant Amen, Haru, or Horus, Osiris, and the other gods. No, we can't put that up there. Gods and goddesses, Murti, primeval gods and goddesses. Oh, wait a minute. The Merua, a god. You see, no, he wouldn't put that up there for the Moors. That was too positive. That was too much God knowledge right there. You see? So this is what hatred make you do. This is what a demarcated, when you read something with a demarcated thought pattern and family, and you ain't dealing with unity of mind, which is a violation of the Maotic principle in first. You know, I'm defending, I'm defending unity right now. Because what he's doing is demarcating the people. All because he feels some type of way, or he's butt hurt, so to speak, because of more put him in his place, or whatever the case may be. Or he just might be an agent. But I'm going to let you hear what he has to say out of his own mouth and his intent. Listen to his intent when I let him speak. So Meru and Meru. So he skipped over all that, and we see he did pull up Meru, right? And he tried to tie that in with this part, desert land, wasteland. You see, that's the only reason he mentioned that, and we just showed you in the beginning what Mount Meru represented. You see? Then he took this definition, mirror, overseer, chief officer, head, superintendent. You see? Inspector dignities of the highest kind. But guess what he didn't want you to see? 
I want to blow this one up a little bit so you can see this one. This is what he didn't want to really tell you. He didn't talk about the middle art. Heads of families, sheiks of tribes. See, he didn't talk about that, did he? Huh? He didn't talk about the middle art. You see, then here, middle art being pretty much in conjunction with this, this is the overseer of the estates and land superior a uh, superintendent. So we already know what the a title to a vast estate is, so to speak. You know, it's basically talking about a caliph. This is the comedian aspect of a caliph right here. And see the same word here. All of it has to do with a chief inspector, a leader. And that's why I say the word dealing with either the man, the land, the God, or the spirit. You see, so when it gave those definitions, in this particular area, and it was speaking on the gods, it ran it all the way down in relation to those roots that related to the god. You see? So when you talk about the Merua, you know, in all actuality, you're talking about, you know, those who are known as the gods. This is your connection to Lemuria, the Moorish gods, Comedian Moorish gods and everything, right? So there's another dealing with mirror. So he read over all this right here. And it don't stop him. You know, he looked over all this because he was trying to fulfill his desire, basically, in attacking the teachings of the Moors. That's what hatred make you do. I mean, we would have accepted and respected the measure better if you just said you wanted to create your little African demonstration and demonstrated whatever, but you didn't have to try to reach out and attack Prophet Noble Drew Ali, and you did it by name too, and let us know that's what you were doing. And he guided me so that I can stumble across it and expose you. You just brought the wrath of the sword of old Democles down upon your consciousness. He used this term, he did use this one, mirror, meaning to see, to look at. So he skipped over all that. I guess he didn't see none of that stuff I showed you a few minutes ago. Mirror. It also means divine eye, sun and moon. Many eye, full of, right? This is dealing with the word mirror. Everybody, people in general. The people in general referred to as the mirror. If he connect that to the more, so, I mean, why didn't you see that? It even come to this special area. Merit here again, the eye of Harris or of Ra. Merit, the name of a part of a magical boat. You see? This right here was interesting. Mirror Aku. You see? And this is dealing with one of the 36 decans. If you're familiar with the decans, it has to do with the dendera, you know, the calendar, you know, but we'll get into that another measure. So mirror, also here, mirror means to bind up, to tie together, to bind on a crown and fetter or be fetter. Right? You see? This is the same measure that they like to refer to when you deal with the mooring in relationship to one. So, mert meaning house, mert meaning town, a quarter in a town or a village. These are the definitions that he overlooked all because he wanted to hate the Moors. Merty here, what does it mean? Two halves of heaven. Merur, Nemur, Mera, which means to guide. You know, why couldn't more mean that? Now, Mir here meaning the Moorish tree. Now, the Moors he referred to in his document in relation to dealing with the Moors. You see? So, what is the Moorish tree? The Mir. You see? 
every nation have to demonstrate on their own vine and fig tree. And that's what we demonstrate as moors, on our own vine and fig tree. What about you, a Furacan, or whatever you're calling yourself? Is that your own vine tree? Huh? So this particular one went through here and took all of this information right here just to attack a people. That's why I say for anybody to do that right there, you had to be um, either somebody told you to do it or that's just a whole lot of hatred that one has. That's a sad situation is what it is, though. It's bad. But we correct in this demonstration right now. You know, we're going to put this one in its place, you know, and... Uh, a couple of more of it. We, we won't even have to deal with no more of his works after this. But, you know, we just want to show our family what people do. Not only they want to fleece the people and make money off the people, but they want to take one free national name. See, in this definition on more in regards to dealing with, you know, the person referred to as that, you know, notice it used the term Morris here, right? And it's in relation to a person. So if this word Morris is used here and you go back to this dictionary and you read here speaking of Morris here as the tree, when you trying to hack at the roots and chop down the Morris tree, because he used that terminology in his own speech. You see, you see in all these definitions, what about mere meaning brave man? A hero. You didn't want to bring that to the manifest, did you? That's mere and amen. See, you didn't use that. You went from that and skipped over all that and went to, to be sick, to suffer from pain, to grieve. You see, be sad, feel sympathy for someone. Sick man. Me Ari. Oh, he went ham on this one right here. <laughs> and we mean that literally. Because you know we moors, we don't deal with the swine. But that's what he did. That's exactly what he did, family. Where is that? Actually, it was probably more toward the end when he started. It's a sad situation, though. Like I said, for one to want to go into a document, you know, just to pretty much um, to attack somebody else. And this is what our community is falling victim to now. You know, instead of our people being taught, you got people trying to capitalize off of our people. And so what they do, they disrespect and try to tear something else apart in order to put themselves on the forefront. Only reason I'm addressing this right here because you attacked my prophet. See, this is the definition where I was telling you he looked over all the positive definitions just to get this definition, to be sick, suffer, pain, sick. Same definitions he went and got. See them right here? You know, literally copy it, cut it out, paste it, and then go to war with the moors. See, he used this one too. I remember that. Mirror. This is when he got into his little death thing. Mirror. Mitty. Dead. Damn. Mirror. Damn uh, uh, one of set. You know, he was feeling himself again when he got back over here. But you passed over mirror or more meaning God. You passed over mirror or more referring to the land and the lakes in ancient Kemet. Are the celestial waters. Why? Demarcated thought pattern. His mind and his heart is amalgamated with the European. Even though he trying to push it and package it up as if he demonstrating for his people. He jumped over all that, came way over here 
And I'm showing you what he did. I'm pointing it out. Then he had the audacity to come over here and take the term pyramid. You know, and then go into that aspect, family. And then try to say that the pyramid, when he tied it back here to Merah, which is an ancient name of Egypt, you take those two vowels out, you have the M and R. The same thing you said is Moorish. So rather than admit that this was the ancient name of Egypt, Mera, Patamera, a Tamara, Tamare, the land of Mera, rather than admit that, oh, that means dead land. Do you see that in here anywhere? No definition over here says dead land here. Well, point it out. He came up with that himself. That's that hatred. That's that demarcated thought pattern. And many of our people think he demonstrated scholarship. So he went on. He looked over these definitions here, right? Well, he did use that, I think, Merua, wretched, weak, because it was negative. But what about this? Merua, Melul, which means a Nubian god, worship at Tamish, and Kalabasha, Mandulas. Merut, a kind of bird. You see, anything that was relevant to the hatred that he had in his heart, he put it out here. You see, what about Mirhi? Which actually deals with a bull god, a form of Osiris or Osa. See, Merhu, the god of perfume. You see, See it again? They going on the God demonstration here. He looked over all that right there. Look at that. I hear our people talking about some, you know, one got murked. He murked him and so forth and so on. That word murk in ancient Kemet means to fight and wage war. Our people be using so many words and don't even know that these words were used in a certain way by our ancestors for real. Merka, war, strife, fight. A sad uh, situation. They like to talk about Kush smoking the Kush, but Kush is the land of your ancient ancestors. Oh man, they got us twisted. Meres, Meres, there it is again. God. So really, this M E R root weighs out more on the divine side of life than it does that dead stuff that he tried to demonstrate. But that's all his mind can see because he's dead in his head. You see? Meres. 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 A god. A god. Huh? I told y'all, you, you gonna learn not to play with me. Y'all think it'd be a game. Y'all think I'd just be on here talking. I'm going to show you receipts with mine every time. I ain't going to never get on here and say something that I came back. Everything I say come from research. I ain't just up here talking out the side of my neck. You know, on something I heard somebody else say. Man knows not by being told. He only knows by being what he knows. You hear me, Morris Kent? We got to stop being lazy and stop letting people give us stuff that tickle the ear and sound good. We got to do our own research. Because if we don't, you know, we're going to constantly be run amok and led astray every time. You know, so that's pretty much the end of all these particular words in regards to dealing with you know, um, <clears throat> these are special demonstrations. But we had to put this one on blast, you know, for getting out here broadcasting that foolery. You see, that's what hatred make you do. Hatred, slander, lewdness, murder, theft, everything at home. That's the lower self. That's the behavior of the lower self. Now, many people get upset and they get mad when I get out here giving this truth. The only reason they mad you know, those who dislike what I bring on the manifest, though, and it don't bother me, 
You know, anybody that know me know I'm going a, I'm to a do me. I'm going to be me regardless. You know, but in all actuality, the only reason they upset is because I'm so direct. I'm uncut. I'm uncut in a respectful way, though. I don't get up here cursing, you know, up here and all that other, you know, uh, belligerent behavior. I don't have to demonstrate right now. You know, I don't demonstrate that type of magic. <clears throat> I'm going to give you the truth, though. So, um, I mean, it's that's what it is, Morris King. He went around all of those divine definitions and picked out everything of hatred that he could find. You know, pretty much just to um, attack. That's a sad situation. That's a real sad situation. You know, so um, our people got to do better as a people, man. You know, we got to do better as a people. You know, if not, you know, the, the worst is yet to come. The worst is yet to come. And all this right here, like I said, because I guess somebody got at the brother and um, he was real upset. But I can't leave without giving you these definitions as well. Dealing with this special word. He used Mar as well. But he didn't go into the aspect of Mar as it deals with to be happy, to flourish, to prosper. You know, why not talk about that? You see? Now, this word is most definitely direct here. This is Marayu. It deals with a Libyan king who attacked Ram Rameses. You see? And we know that the Libyans are definitely Moorish in the bloodline. You see? There's another one in here too, I definitely. You have also Marsar. Marsa, the king of the Keta. For those who don't know who the Keta are, look the Keta up. These are the ancient Comedian uh, colonies, so to speak, that, that gave birth to the Anatolians. These are the ones that really gave birth to the Ottoman Empire and everybody else over there in that particular area. So go study the Keta. You see? But notice it had a name that was closely uh, to this Moorish demonstration still. You know? I'm trying to find another definition in here I came across that was very powerful. It might be a little further back here. Okay. Yeah, he took this Mar to be oppressed. He took those definitions as well. Where is that other demonstration at? This one here is real powerful, the one I'm looking for now. <clears throat> okay, not that one. Not that one. Let's see. Okay, not that one. Okay. Okay, that was the beginning. So I know it's probably got to be back this way then. Here it is right here. Ma'ari. Ma'arif. And this is the title of the sun god. The ancient Sufis speak of Marifa as one of the paths that they demonstrate, you know, and this actually has to do with the divine light 
you know, a rock, so to speak. And that's what they're referring to when they speak of the sunlight. But right here, you see the definition of this word right here? Now, we told you what the name more come from, Mari. And this is dealing with the title of the high priest of Anu. See, they were known as the Mar. Right? When you go back to the Mar and Tania, they're known as the Mari. So when you hear that the term Mari means God, as we showed you here, and it's more, I have a whole bunch more, you know, to show you. I'm just trying to take you to the same measure. Moorish gods. When you go back to Kemet, you can see the etymological connection to the word Mar. Because these gods, the high priests of Anu are the ones that actually preserved the teaching after the fall of Kemet. It was the Moors, the Mars, the Moorish gods. You see, what about Mahir? A fiery flesh that come from the eye, come forth from the eye. Mahir. You know why he didn't go into the definition of that special demonstration? It was too positive. He was looking for something to tell. <laughs> tear the family of nations apart. That's what he was looking for. He wasn't looking for nothing to unite the Asiatic nations. Oh, my bad. I forgot. He's African. A chopped and screwed remixed African from the Akan bloodline, right? That's what he say. There's one more definition here. Yeah, we know he used this definition too. Mar, peasant. That's a lot of hatred, family. They even take your time out. You know, to do that much research, to concoct a hateful document, to bring conflict against the people. That's say a lot about a brother, right? Now here, look. Here's another positive definition. Mahir. 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 The guardian of the fourth hour of the night. I like that grand demonstration right there. Make me think about Swift Angel number four. I'm almost done with this demonstration, Morris Ken. There's one more that I have over here that I want to show you. That he tried to hide from y'all. We're going to expose all of them like this. And one of them that want to get out here playing, we got something for you. There it is again. Mar. Amen. And that's how we can close that damage to Amen. Right? Mar. We're going to go back over here just in case you didn't see it. You see the root word, Mari? This is the name from whence Mauritania derived. Before... The area that's known as Morocco today was called Mauritania. It was known as the land of the Mari, the Moorish gods. The history of this special land, when you do the research on them. Recently, they have discovered, and they refer to this particular region as the Iberian, or the ibero Morugian people. They say this place has been around for over 400,000 years. And they showed the connection between the ibero Morugian people or the Mari, the Moorish gods, and them coming straight from Kemet. Now, this shouldn't surprise you. You see? It shouldn't surprise you. And see, a lot of them like to talk about Mali. But if you're talking about Mali, and we ain't talking about the drug either, we talking about Mali, the place. You know, so a lot of them like to talk about Mali, you know, in this particular region. 
better yet, we'll do it like this here. So this is the Western Sahara. Algeria, all that. You got Mali Hill, Senegal. You can't be from these places here in these areas and not have ties to Mauritania. But one time, Mauritania actually represented more than just this area. Mauritania covered here all the way back to Kemet. That's when you're dealing with that ancient Moorish Empire. You see the Mari when they was demonstrating. You see Mari at the root right there. So Senegal, Gambia, all these places where slaves were taken, they came from here and they was brought to on a westerly course, so to speak. You know, they went deep as into the center. They went all the way down there as well. But most of all, they referred to the people that they had captured as Moors. This was the European demonstrating this. They said that they brought the Moors over here. They said that they brought the Moors, and Moors had already been here as well. You know why? Because not only are we indigenous to the United States of America, but we indigenous to the land that they like to call Africa, of course. But we call it, in other words, like our chairman teach, we indigenous to the planet. So which name has to do more with freeing our people? Answer the question. Is it Africa? Is it black? Or is it more? Which one? See all of this here. More and tiny. On this map, they actually show a little bit more. You go from here. This is pretty much in the area where Libya is. So when you talk about the Libyans, those who are referred to the Moors, you know, in the uh, Comedian language, it's not strange because right up here, all the way across over here, this ibero Marusian area here, so to speak, you know, Atlantis being in this area, the lost continent that's said to be sunk, so to speak, and they have found underwater cities in these areas. You know, Atlan, even the Atlas Mountain being connected with that, you know, there was always some overlap between, you know, ancient Kemet, the Kushites, and these people. Basically coming from here all the way across North Africa. And when the Arabs came in and they tried to put Islam down, you know, uh, uh, implement Islam as a way of life on our people, our people accepted Islam, but they really accepted what the prophet referred to as Islamism. How do we know this? Because most of the Islamic school of theology over here is straight Sufism. Go do your research on all these different people that study Islam. And they either, it's, it's all pretty much Sufism. And they even trace the Sufi teachings back to Kemet, to Dul Nun. You see, so when we demonstrate the way we demonstrate, that's why I love uh, lessons on a higher level, lofty teachings. Because our holy prophet, when he received them, he didn't receive just the basic five pillars and so forth and so on. He received the Sufistic expression of the teachings. You see? So many people need to go back and study and do their research and stop dividing the people with this nonsense. Because this one cat right here, he out there bad now. He done been exposed. If you fall for this foolery after this right here, then I just don't know what to say. You know, it's just meant for you to be lost, I guess. But, you know, that's a lot of hatred. You got to actually, in order for you to align yourself with this individual in this thought pattern family, you have to become a hater to agree with this foolery that he put in here, a hodgepodge of a bunch of madness. And now that we went into that special drawing, we're going to come here real quick, and we're going to let you see 
how he tried to twist the people. We ain't going to let it run all the way out, you know, and play all the way out. We're just going to give a little measure to let you hear. And if you want to go and listen to that foolery, you can go listen to it, the rest of it. We just pointing it out on the intent. His intent wasn't honorable at all. He let you know he tried, He came to destroy the Moors and got all this stuff up here talking about Kemet, trying to make it look like he demonstrating the adept philosophy. Where is that? Not that one. And then, to be honest with you, he, I believe he came across some of my information, the way he set his documents up. But back when I was putting my little documents out there, I set them up a certain way. I'm going to get past all the other stuff we're talking about. Verb. Under their blood soaked the earth, that spirit is doing farmlands and cultivatable land stuff. These are the divine dynasties. So, but even going back to that, when you look at the Torah and papyrus, so-called friendly feeling, and we show that entry. But if the sun is sailing through the sky, I have Ra, that star is the big one. We've proved through the cosmology that they're all related. And so far, we've done some of that, but this you really have no knowledge of cosmology and these individuals really don't do that they just read about and talk about and go to little images of Medi Shema and Medi Men the goddess Medi of the south Medi of the north we also show Hapi Met Hapi of the north Hapi Reset Hapi of the south showing who they are we mentioned the piece about Muhammad you can want more details about the fictional cartoon character Muhammad as well as Solomon, Shiva, Menelik, Moses, Aaron, Jesus, Yeshua, all of them, um, never existing at all, not black, not white, ever. Cuckoo to the the ancestral jurisdiction, we break all of that information down. Okay, give me one second, give me a few seconds, I'll be right back. Irrefutable. And this also shows, once you study this information and then you look at other individuals arguments then it's clear it betrays the fact that they really have no knowledge of cosmology they brought a eurocentric mindset in blackface and tried to imprint that on the culture but they don't understand who these deities really are and how they function and interact with one another and how they're part of the cosmology and how they give birth to the terms the, the terms that we use are born of the movements of the deities themselves we had a we did a broadcast Inne, the sounds of the deities, the abosom, the nature of their birth name, where we talk about how these names, these words that we use, come directly from the divinity. It's like you can whip a rope in, around in a circle and it creates a whistling sound, or you make a guitar string vibrate, and the vibrations generate sound. As the fiery forces of the abosom move through space, they generate a certain collection of sounds. When the cool, watery, magnetic pump you really have no knowledge of cosmology. And these individuals really don't do that. They just read about and talk about and go to little rituals and observe what other people are doing, but then they have a Eurocentric mindset and they corrupt knowledge of what they're even observing right in front of them. Their Eurocentric mindset doesn't allow them to see what's taking place, so they block out what's really happening and give a foolish definition. Exactly so what they he promote doing. themselves as you know, researchers and teachers and spiritualists and so forth. So you never embrace what someone says outwardly on face value. You must always investigate, and it is your responsibility to invoke the Abosom, the Orishas of Odu, who are connected to you by blood. That is your responsibility as an Akuraikani adult, Akuraikani means adult, that is your functioning creation to attune to the forces in nature that govern your spiritual anatomy, draw on the energy you've been given, open it up and utilize it to execute your functioning creation. That's your responsibility. So in the process, when you do that, you'll be engaged in the kinds of activities that allow you to attune to the Apostle 
the embodiment of divine order in creation and learn real cosmology by interacting with them. So when you read text, read about ancient Kemet, or learn about ancestry, to the dwellers along the river banks, it appeared that the entire country had been inundated for re-emergence or rebirth. The land, the land of the ancestors is an ancestor, oldest composition in the world is a book, literary composition. Both, we just showed how people, they sought to associate it being black with death in a pejorative sense and therefore with darker um, than the Western Europeans, such as white Arabs and Hindus, although white Arabs and white Hindus are not Afurakanu, Afuraikainu, they are not our people at all. Just as the term mer, love, was corrupted into amor, meaning love in European languages, so was the term mer, meaning dead people, the damned, slaves, servants, vassals, corrupted into mor in European languages. And commit to be labeled a mer, or a dead or a damned person, or a slave was a pejorative. It's carried over into the European usage of the term. So when you see a group of people labeled as mer, the plural meru in ancient Kemet, is referencing slaves, servants, vassals, dependents, and so forth. See, you see what he did? He took this little definition that he done basically uh, extracted, the ones he chose and tried to put a blank indictment a blanket indictment over all the Moorish people based upon his demarcated thought pattern. And he tried to demonstrate and be eloquent. You see? Now listen. The whites and offspring know that. They continue to use that term slave, vassal, bondsman, the damned, the dead, mayor. They say more and they continue to use that term in their language but they applied it to all of our people instead of just that class of people who were in that condition. So the only difference being, as we say, that all black people were labeled more as a pejorative by the whites. The Europeans understood that the color black was associated with divine power, ancestrally vested power and command. It was therefore associated with death because the whites and their offspring improperly associated death with evil. They sought to associate it being black with death in a pejorative sense, and therefore with evil. This is how mer, dead, damned, slave, servant, was connected with Ta Meri, the land of the dead, the land of the submergence, the inundation, the wasteland, the burial, the submerged land. If, if, if there was an inundation of a river where you are right now, and it flooded everything, and all the houses went underwater, all the food, plant life, farmland went underwater, everything went underwater, you wouldn't be happy, you would say everything died as a result of the Medit or the inundation. It was a time where everything was submerged by the water or buried by the water. Ta Medi is the land of the inundation, the land that is buried or dies, but the land not only dies, later on it, it resurrects. Do you hear him talk about Ta Meri being the dead land, right? That was what was unique about ancient Kemet, it very rarely rained. So the country was totally dependent on the death and resurrection of the black land every year. So it was the land, the place where the land dies. Yeah, he tried to twist that up. You know, everybody know that rain is symbolic to resurrection and if you committed and that's elementary. Every Listen. year, but also resurrect. The dead land, the land that becomes inundated, submerged or buried. Okay, so, because Ta Meri, land of the pyramids, also Kemet, the black land, land of the black, then black was improperly associated by the whites with death, slave, servant, etc. So he trying to defend the word black, even though the word black, you know, didn't exist until the European brought it on the manifest as well. If you go right here, you can see that dealing with color terminology. The term black came from the Europeans, you see, in many different ways, but the Gottingen School of History in the late 18th century, in parallel with the biblical terminology for uh, race, Semitic, Hamitic, and Japhetic, 
divide mankind into five colored races, Ethiopian black, Caucasian white, Mongolian yellow, American red, Malayan brown, subgroups. And then they came up with a map right here. John Frederick uh, Bloomback came up with five races labeled Caucasian, white, Mongolian, or yellow, Ethiopian, black, American, copper color, Malayan, which is olive color. So, you know, when you see this demonstration, not only did they do it, but even right here, the transmission of the color terminology for race from antiquity to early anthropology in the 17th century, Europe took place via rabbinical literature, meaning that the Jews demonstrated this stuff. You see? So they the ones came up with these subgroups. But then you come right here in one of their documents, they say he know especially blessed Shem and his son making them dark but comely. You see? And he talked about the sons of Ham making them dark and comely. And then he said Japheth his sons, they were made entirely white. So this was the, rab the rabbis, the Sanhedrin, you know, who came up with these demonstrations. You see, Europeans and the Jews came up with these color codes. You know, but you out here talking about you demonstrating Afrocentric chematology and comedian science, uh, Africani, as you call it. <laughs> You got the cunny part right, but we already know that a cunny in the Comedian language means serpent, which you demonstrate in that a special way. We gonna make, we gotta make it plain. We can't let him get away with this, family. We must also recall that it is the Medes, divinities, inundation, floods, submergence, death, and so forth, who bring the black silt from the south to deposit on the banks of the river. The Medes water or the flood water as opposed to the water during the remainder of the year was thus the black water. The black silt comprised the com et or the black land. The black silt is sacred to Osar. It is his shrine on earth. He thus has the title com or, meaning the great or black one. Com. And he's shown with black skin. When he's operating as watch for or the great green one, he's shown with green skin dealing with resurrection and renewal. But as a calm or he's shown with black skin, the great black one. And this is where you get calm at the black country and calm out the black people who are dark brown people with black undertones who are connected with all star and other divinities of that energy complex. Whereas you also have the Desheru people, the red people, meaning dark brown people with red undertones because they're connected to those energies of fire, the desert, as well as the red clay, and the divinities who have their red, um, their sacred colors red. So the black and the red, the blacks and the red, the Kamal, the Desheru, it has to do specifically with skin color as well as the color of the land based on the deities who have those um, colors sacred to them and it's shown in their skin color as well. So Negroes are trying to say that Kemet doesn't mean black. They have no knowledge of cosmology at all. <laughs> we showed four different versions of the this term Kemeti in the Medusa, and we break those down. In the first version, the determinative Medusa, or symbol is that of the notched palm branch, which references a time as in the beginning of a season or period. So you have Todd Mary spelled out, but then the final um, Medusa, Medusa assembled is the symbol of a notch palm branch, which references the time or season, and then the um, symbol for uh, desert land. So the time is Todd Mary, the time or season of the waste land. That's the first one. You see how Medusa many times he reiterate the same thing over and over again? And of course, Set, where Seti was corrupted into Setin or Satan, the spirit. Cultivation. Yes, it has the mirror, which is the, the, the land dies. And then some of them are proud to bring forth that argument, like, well, you can't have cultivation and. and, and so, Negroes who don't understand the cosmology, because they have no currency with the Abosom or the Orisha as they claim. 
or the Meru, the slaves, the vassals, and the dead. Drug addicts in America, the walking dead. A white foreigner could enter a black community in America, learn of the label that black people use, walking dead, and begin to refer to all black people, including all those not addicted to any drugs, as the walking dead. This is a pejorative used by a community for a certain segment of the population who are self-destructive beings taken by a foreigner and used as a label of identity for the entire community. This is a deliberate attempt to insult and redefine the people. In fact, many whites in America do refer to all black people in America in these terms today. So, the whites in our spring after invading Akurakani Afraikaji civilization, losing numerous wars to our people, decided to work on destroying our ancestral religion and culture. This was the means by which they believed they could disrupt the society, exploit division, and ultimately divide and conquer. Part of the process was to demonize black people. This is why all throughout white pseudo-religion, black is defined as evil, of the devil, demonic, etc. Black is associated with death in a negative fashion. This goes directly back to ancient Kemet, where Medi, death of the crops, flooding of the land, end of a cycle season was associated with mayor, pyramids, shrines for the dead, and mayor, the dead, those who arrived in port and were mayor or moored, and also the class of the dead who were damned. Also see the related term in European languages, moro. You see how he does what he is doing? He's trying to hypnotize himself into believing what he's saying. And that's why he keeps saying the same thing over and over and over again. He's using a hammer on his own head. You know, you ever seen somebody hit their head up in the head with a hammer? Morbid, more chewary, more ron, these things, etc. meaning melancholy, psychologically unhealthy, associated with death, sanctuary of the dead. All this to try to make more mean dead. When we see how many definitions about God and divinity that he actually omitted. Ignorant, mentally dead, so morbid, mortuary, mortician, moron, of course, all these different things have to do with that negative, enslaved, or dead mind. All of them are have the same roots as Mera and later more and are pejorative terms. Yet the association with the social class, slaves, servants, socially dead, bound, more fastened, their labor and service, and the spiritual designation for a certain class of the deceased, meaning the damned, mayor, was artificially expanded by the whites as a definition of all black people. Those who Akura Kanu Akurai Kaitnut today who have embraced the idiocy of Moorish culture and identity and refer to themselves as Moors are perpetuating the perverse agenda of the white narrow spring. They are identifying themselves as dead people. Many of these individuals perpetuate as well the false notion that the term black means death. They therefore do not call themselves black, nor do they understand the proper etymology of the term Afurakani, Afuraikaiti, or African. They therefore do not recognize nor embrace the reality that they are Afurakani, Afuraikaiti, or African. Black does not mean death. More means death. <laughs> of course, we've proven that etymologically and cosmologically. And of course, these individuals have a deeply seated and deeply seated self-hatred. So they embrace that self-hatred and it manifests by the terms they use to describe themselves, embracing pseudo-white culture, anything outside of anything black or Afurakani, Afurakani or African, that's what they flock to because they manifest self-hatred. They never release that after spending... Now here he is calling himself Afurakani a term that he invented. And he came from the European definitions of what's being given. He used every negative de definition he could give. And he telling you that we hate ourselves. The most of us. <laughs> Inculcated within us by the white and our spring being raised in this society, they still hate themselves. Anything associated with black, Afurakani, Afurakani, African culture, religion, spirituality, anything they try to this 
associate themselves with it fraudulently to identify with any other group of people. Our enemies, Asians, pseudo-Native Americans, Europeans, some of them want to be called Caucasians, anything outside of who they really are because they hate themselves. So these are brainwashed Negroes full of self-hate, but they're articulate in their self-hate. Now, of course, you have a certain percentage of them who are teachers who are simply agents of the whites and their offspring, and they work on behalf of the whites and their offspring. Just like now, listen to him because he actually doing what he talking about the Moors doing. Listen to him. The overseer on the plantation work along with the white slave master against the rest of the people. So the teachers of this, these false doctrines, they know this information is false. This is why they're teaching. We've always had these agents in the community that be, did not begin with COINTELPRO. It began on the plantation when you had people who were study what the black people were talking about, if they were talking about revolution and freeing themselves from the plantation, this is a Negro who would run back to the master and say they're planning a revolution. That's him. He talking about himself, y'all. I'm telling you, more. He would be the one who would be, or she would be the one who would be an overseer whipping the slaves, enslaved black people. Look at him. You can look at him and see the Asian in him. On behalf of the master. Even though the master were rape and torture, the overseer, he would still feel like that was a, um honor to be raped by the slave master. He'd rather be closer to the slave master, being raped by the slave master. I want y'all to pay close attention to this conscious community and mores. This is the new face of neo-colonialism. Neo-colonialism is where somebody, you know, is basically moving and infiltrating the culture, look just like you, try to carry on with the traditions and the custom you demonstrate, but all the while they're working for the adversary. So they educate themselves on the linguistics or the lingo of consciousness and then utilize it to enslave the people at the behest of their slave master and make it sound like they're for you now. Do the bidding of the slave master then connect with his own people. That was COINTELPRO back then. And these same Negroes have reincarnated, and they are Moorish teachers, they are Hebrew teachers, they are Christian teachers, they are Muslim teachers trying to make Islam the ancient African religion. And ancient Notice, you see how he attacking everybody, the whole conscious community now, but he's Africani. All this kind of nonsense. These individuals are parasites, they must feed on a host. The host is Afurakani, Afurakani culture, and specifically now ancient Kemet. So they will feed and suck the blood out of ancient Kemet to try to pump up their false ideologies like Moorishism and Hebrewism and Islam and Judaism and everything else. Ancient, you know, pseudo Hindu nonsense, pseudo metaphysics, occult Hermeticism, Kabbalism, Sufism, Gnosticism, all of these pseudo practices. They will use the ancient culture as a host suck the blood out of it to try to prop up their own culture to make it legitimate but at the same time try to denigrate the ancient Afurakani Afurakani culture they'll even try to use comments to prop up atheism or prop up monotheism or any kind of foolish doctrine whatever it is because you're dealing with on one hand agents of the white narrow spring as well as the larger group who are just brainwashed individuals who are consumed with self-hatred and they have never let that go and it manifests with their the zeal with which they embrace anything that is anti Afurakani, Afurakani, that self loathing. So we've proven that and exposed that. Okay. So there's more information with regard. We, we talk about the origin of the term black briefly, just to knock out that foolish argument. Uh, we have our book, Afuraka, Afurakai, the origin of the term Africa, where we proof conclusively that term comes from our culture and our cosmology um, being black. These terms also have their roots to where Afura, it comes from Afura, uh, uh, the different, definite article in Coptic, Hara, Afo, or Abrafo, to say only me is cultivated land because they got that, which, but we migrated up into Kanana, ancient Canaan, um, into uh, Sumer, which will later be called Sumer and Akkad and so forth, Akkara. And it's Mara, Mara, 
of the menu, and on and so forth. They learn the pejorative term Ali, Elijah Muhammad, and Abdul in control. All of you are Mori, Mori, slaves, servants, vassals, dependent, weak, wretched, um, sickly, infirm, damned. That's what you are, black people. Mori, coming from many, meaning that. And brainwashed Negroes today call themselves more. Based on a term that we use for the worst people in society that physically dead who were damned, not the regular physical dead, not your regular ancestors and ancestors, but the ones who were damned, Meru, and also the socially dead, the slaves, the vassals, the servants. We use that term, and now the whites and offspring use that term to call all of us that, and then brainwashed Negroes embrace that term all over again, and now they want to call themselves more, under the direction of the whites and offspring. All right, and it just, you know, supports the insane notion of white supremacy. So this is why we say this is the origin of such individuals as Timothy Drew, so-called Noble Drew Ali, Elijah Muhammad, and Abdul Hamid Suleiman, all of whom were worshipers of the white Arab or Turk as divine or God, all of them. Drew Ali worshiping the white Turk, Elijah Muhammad had a white homosexual Arab saying this is God in person, Suleiman worshiping these white Egyptians and so forth and bringing that nonsense um, into America. All of them worship the white Arab, the white Turk, as divine or God, dedicating their lives to brainwashing black people with white worship. And all of them trying to get us to worship the whites and their offspring. Some people think the Nation of Islam is talking about black man is God and all of that, but their fake God is a white homosexual era, Bard Muhammad. And they're trying to get you to worship this cracker, this criminal, as God. They have people praying to him, have this picture up in their home. And all he did is regurgitate what Seti demonstrated. So, you know, birds of a feather flock together. Listen to it. And when they hear a little ringing in their ears, they're talking about that's Master Farah Muhammad trying to communicate with you. This is what these Negroes are teaching. And of course, he's up on a, uh, on a spaceship and, and all this other nonsense. Talking about our, our hair and our noses and our lips it used to be straight when we were in our right state of mind. But then when we fell, then our noses became swollen and our lips became swollen and our hair became kinky because that's represents our degeneration as a people. And when we get back to the hereafter, our hair will start to grow straight again. This is what the Nation of Islam teaches and has always taught because they deal with white worship. The same with Timothy Drew, Ali, the same with Suleiman, Abdul Hamid Suleiman, the Canaanite Temple, the Moorish Science Temple of America, the Nation of Islam, all of the forms of Islam, Nuwabianism, all forms of Hebrewism, including Moorish Hebrewism, and others continue to perpetuate the agenda of the white slave master from Eastern Eurasia, just as black Christians continue to perpetuate the agenda of the white slave master from Western Eurasia. Yeah, he definitely boule. Asia and America. So all of these individuals taught us to hate ourselves, reject the reality that we are Akurakani Afraikaitni, African people, and to embrace a pseudo-Asian identity. They taught us to denigrate and reject Akurakani Afraikaitni ancestral religion and culture and to worship the white Arabs, Turks, and Hindus as God or as having divine, a divine position as custodians of the true religion. This is the contemporary origin of black people foolishly referring to themselves with a derogatory name Moors. The title Moors is an insult to the intelligence of all. He got, a lot of, he got a lot of hatred for the Moors, don't he? People and all of our ancestors and ancestors. It is equivalent. It's, it's the equivalent of calling ourselves nigger, notwithstanding the false etymology now circulating regarding this. Now, if you notice, this video been out here since July the 7th, 2019. He only got three comments on it in 29 likes term um, nigger by the uninformed of course we have our book any awareness 
where we show the origin of the term God, the origin of the term nigger and nigga. It had nothing to do with naga, nothing to do with nigga, nothing to do with nature, any of that foolish misinformation that people are promoting. We show the origin of the term Negro, Necro, and so forth. And to me, it comes directly from Clement as well. It means foes or enemies who are crushed and beaten to death. So it's always been a derogatory term. Even though Negroes want to make it mean God or divine, that's nonsense. And we actually prove it. As opposed to just people talking nonsense and making little videos and writing little silly documents with no proof whatsoever. We actually no, we just proved that you went through a document and pulled out every negative connotation you could to hate the Moors and you expose. Yes, sir. I hope they get it to you so you can test me. We prove it conclusively. So the term Moor is like saying nigger, slave, idiot, clown, um, reject, all of that. And that's what people are calling themselves. But you can go create a name called Africani and everybody's supposed to follow you, huh? That is the um, article right there. Then we have some more Medusu in the appendix. And also we show in the... So that's basically it, Moore's Ken. You know, it really ain't no point to going any further. Because you can see he got a lot of hatred in him toward the Moore's people. Not only the Moors, but anybody over here pretty much that ain't demonstrating as Africani. Something that he just created you know, in his own mind, so to speak, because the metal netter don't support that. You know, he came up with it. He done concocted and put some stuff together and say, this is who he is. I could respect it better again if he said, well, I'm going to put this together and we're going to call ourselves that and not us as a whole, the Moors, but him and his little group. Y'all do that over there somewhere, you know, if that's what y'all doing. But, you know, ones respect you from that aspect, just being hard-headed, than to get up here and lie to the people and try to hide the truth, hide the truth from the people. Come on, man. That's aging activity, aging behavior, man. And like I said, let this be a lesson to a whole lot of you because I ain't done yet. You know, this right here, you know, he was addressing my prophet, mentioned my prophet name, name dropped him. That's why I demonstrated this measure. And I wasn't looking for it. I came across it in the process of doing other research. You know, so, um, yeah, be careful who you listen to, family. Because these cats out here are sub males, man. You know, so if you listen to that after that right there, if you ain't got no clear conception or anybody talking like that right there, I just, I pity you. So that being said, I want to say Uncle Jetson now, life, health, and prosperity be upon all of you people. It's about the unity, people, not the demarcation. And we have to expose clowns like this right here in order to get our people to unite. Freedom is not a game. Moorish movement, divine movement, everlasting movement. We on the manifest.